Very interesting now as they come into the Grand Finals. Phenom, of course, from winner's side. Recommends Barnett from the loser's side. Having just played against a Luke, and a very strong Luke at that in Torpon, it's only Phenom and then Recommends Barnett who have taken Torpon out. How does Recommends Barnett do the same thing versus Phenom? That's the question, right? Same exact tools, character tools, that Phenom's going to be using. But, you know, will he, will he do the fireball at the same time? Will he try to move forward at the same time? Like, just questions like that. That is going to be what this is all about. And I'm very interested to see how Phenom plays differently than Torpon. What's, what is the difference maker going to be, relatively speaking, between him and the player that we just saw? Maybe there won't be one, right? Maybe Recommends Barnett runs away with that, certainly. But what, what's Phenom's intention? Like, what, what are the different timings that he wants to do, different spaces he wants to do? That is going to be really cool to see as we watch this Grand Finals. It's going to be a very shallow prediction but i'm going to see a lot more sandblasters i think within the mid range Ooh, okay. outside of maybe like a fierce if he runs into a slide so be it i feel like if it's okay. not if <laughs> it's enough. not if it's not deep enough you're not going to really like get a counter hit situation i think it's just like a couple of spots where that slide is not going to do anything else other than give you what like frame advantage not necessarily I mean, yeah. a combo so i want to see a little bit of that control from the side of phenol okay. i think that's going to be the, the, the name of the game here but with a person like Rickman's Barnett, with the amount of reads that they've had thus far, how do you control something like that? <laughs> that's, <laughs> Easier that's, said that's, than that's done, of question, course, right? right? Again, back but, to kind of rerouting the question, essentially. It's like, yeah. what, are you gonna, what are you supposed to do to keep someone like Rickman's Barnett away from this hot streak? And uh, we've seen, man, you have, if you're thinking to yourself as Phenom, is like, damn, I have to do this again? I actually have to face off against this person yeah, in talk, the Grand Finals? Right. What happened last time that they played in CPT? So there was a reset. It was 3-2, to two, done in the last game, last round between Rickamans and Phenom. However, after that had happened, Phenom decided to go with Bison and gets full-on swept 3-0. Thought of as Rickamans. a good matchup for Bison versus Minot, that, right? Yeah. yeah, as we talked about it before. But as Rickamans Barnett showed, obviously he can handle that. Well, I wouldn't expect that this time. It's, it's not going to be the Nikali as well, because he also flexed Nikali during the initial set of Grand Finals, if I'm not mistaken. Mm, so, Nikali has been buffed since then. You're right. You're right. I mean, so has Bison, actually. That too? <laughs> For some reason. It was pretty good before. It was pretty good now. No, I, I I, mean, I guess it doesn't need to be Luke. I, you know, I'm assuming, I suppose, that it will be Luke, but it doesn't need to be Luke. We have been told <sighs> that it's, you know, Luke is likely, I think, but we also know, as you said, Dictator could be the choice, Nikali could be the choice, Karen could be the choice. If there's any number of characters yeah. that Phenom could use. I do like, if, if we're, we're talking about the list of characters, I still think, you know, Luke is going to be the main chicken yeah. here because of the fact that they, they faced off against each other in a World Warrior set yeah. uh, a exactly. couple of months over thus far. You know, yeah. Phenom pretty much winning every times. single time. Yes. Um, it wasn't necessarily the case where he faced off against Rickamans every single time, but that's a lot of data for Phenom to have an understanding of what to do. In fact, I wish I could have seen that as like a reference point between like those two engaging over in Salt Mine Leagues. But as it stands right now, it's going to be just Phenom versus Rickamans. We're going to see what it is that sets Phenom uh, away from like the rest of the pack in regards to all the other Luke players in this region. His mindset's so good. He always comes in with a plan. You know, he and Veggie are talking about that stuff all the time. What's the plan going to be? And he's just fantastic at, at instituting that, at keeping his mind on the actual game and at not getting caught off guard yeah. and at knowing what it is he wants to do, where he wants to be. So yeah, we'll see what the differences are between his style of Luke and Torpon's style of Luke as we head in now in the Grand Finals. I like the idea. That's one way to stop the mummy drill. Try to get maybe a flash knuckle. I will say, if you happen to catch Minot Airborne with the back roundhouse and do the uh, the Fujimura combo with like charge flash knuckle, charge oh, flash knuckle. Oh man, I've seen that. I would love to see if that kind of uh, happen again. Well, that was one thing right there. He, well, I guess two things, right? The one thing you were just talking about, but also that he checked, in fact, DP'd the dive kick like, right away. No hesitation at all. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. With the control here, yeah. outside of fierce range, if you eat a slide from that range, it's gonna be just fine. I think you're you're stopping, you're stuffing the the orb from even activating. Yeah, that said, he's been put all the way into the corner, which is not ideal. Down in life, <laughs> Rick right. gonna take it. So scratch, you're right. Scratch that strategy, well, David. I, I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Again, Phenom always comes in with a strategy, mm -hmm. and it was working pretty yes. well for the first half of it. Unfortunately, at the end, it didn't. So yeah, maybe he makes a change. We'll see. I wonder if that was an anticipation for maybe like a, a, a round start slide from Rickman's. Like Phenom just walking up within that range. Oh, a little short on the Sandblaster. That was a jab version. 
That was Again, too close. But Rickman's how? Oh! Yeah, Phenom walked out of it. Jesus! What? <laughs> it really made the not pay. Oh no, it's still active. That was a medium kick that got stuffed out from Phenom. That crush actually gave Rikamon's trigger. And the Here space. It Look at this. Oh boy. We didn't get a punish for us out of Rikamon. I don't think Rikamon's thought that was gonna come up. Yeah, he didn't he didn't let the orbs rip. He wasn't looking for the safety cover. That That's totally fine for Phenom. Oh, Look yeah. at the trade-off and damage. Absolutely. Mm. We saw how he was able to do that last time. All right, that ends up working Phenom. All right, out Phenom. We saw that he did that uh -oh. through a Sand Blaster last time. This time he got baited by I'm not sure what, to be honest. You know, we talked about intuition and leads. Sometimes one takes over the other and you kind of act on it impuls impulsively and it's just not in your favor. It could also be that you're like pumping the motion and, you know, you accidentally press the old button. Happens sometimes too. I blame the gamer fingers, man. The fingers. <laughs> the way you said it, you really the got fingers. me. It's like it's like replaying in no. the head, like the way you say, "No, the fingers." <laughs> okay, back to the strategy. Oh boy, yeah. Outside of the range, no, still within the fierce range. That's a lot of damage incoming. Double, triple, quadruple flashed up. Technically, eight. It did nothing though. And Phenom's back jump right there was key in not allowing Rikamon to set anything up. Oh! I love the air to exchange for Rikamon's, and I love the V-reversal more from Phenom. On the approach. To the other side. Phenom is taking some damage here. Rikamon has two left. But the grab! It's... Because you're not going to get touched if you're in the grab animation. And that was a very, very shallow uh, dive kick, actually. That's too close, I would say, to be able to react. Okay. Uppercut! Would have been it. Yeah. Hey, well, Barrick, you can't walk and block that. That's, That's too difficult. So to hard. Out. Yes, and especially to be able to super on reaction. Very, very difficult. So, okay, there's Phenom. That's the kind of stuff he wants to do. His defense was great. He gave some different looks in terms of how to deal with the trigger. He jumped back out of the orb one time when it could have, if he had touched it, turned into offense for Minot. Did a great job at staying outside of her range. It's pretty Round consistent. One. Fight. Going back into it, all tied up one apiece. No, I'm sorry, this is 1 0. Rickman looked like he was in full control, actually. At the beginning, to the yeah. point where I thought he had already gotten the game, but in fact, it was Phenom making the big comeback. Oh, doesn't even get a chance to recall it. That's what I like to see throwing out the sandboxes in moments where Rickman wants to recall that orb. You get so much free damage off of that. That was like, what, three, two, three sandboxes? Look at that. He'll take that exchange nine times out of ten in terms of the damage and the meter that's built. So good for Phenom. Gives you more ammo for the flash knuckle. Hey. Oh boy. Gonna see a reset of some kind here. Oh, I think he, I don't I don't think that was it. I think that was the intended combo though. Phenom knows that like anything's gonna do it. All he needs is any medium. Oh boy. Yeesh. Oh boy. And that's uh, that's tough if you recommends. I think um, the initial thought was maybe like drill. Right. I'd imagine. But just didn't survive anything. So Phenom again with the hit. He's got the corner yet again. Okay. No whiff punish on that. Phenom has just navigated everything. To be fair, Rikmon's Brian is doing the same, but Phenom is outside of the ranges that Thorfinn was playing pretty often. That's so smart. Phenom covering the tracks against Rickman's Barnett as soon as that orb is out, and there's going to be so much trouble for Rickman to so recall. But no, you don't get to recall for free. Yeah. Not at all. And Phenom capitalizes on that. Two to zero. Again, we're talking about the Bob and Weave situations you had briefly mentioned. Can we talk about also... His active defense, as soon as the orb is out, Rickman's to try to steal turns dashing up, or at least throwing out some of these normals. A lot of the damage that has come in after the recall, or sorry, after the orb has been thrown out, he's been throwing out some of his mediums as a counter-poking tool. He understands when he can actually counter-poke against Minot. I think that's what a lot of these players in general were missing. Not he's even just the it, No doubt. Are we going to see a 3-0 shutout? I'd be very surprised. Not to, not to say it's out of the realm of possibility because no. it's Phenom after all. Absolutely. Look how often Phenom is outside of her. He's just at the right spot. Like, what he's can you so say? Good. He's just at the right spot. He's actually so good. He's a different level right now. 
same, same, but different level, I should say. <laughs> he, he walked backwards right there. What a genius. This nope. guy. It's it's so interesting to see the back and forth and just like the decision making between both. I'm certainly perplexed as to how Phenom knows. I mean, like, I'm not too perplexed. The call outs with the sandblast stopping the orb over and over again. Mm -hmm. So, so good. Uh -oh. oh, boy, the first big mistake, but not. Now gets to punish severely. Rickman's Barnett, you have to go for a reset, right? You have four orbs left? Yep, the reset's there. The block's there, though, from Phenom. It's going to be more than enough for Rickman's to finish it off. And I love that. I love that a lot. Capitalizing on some of the big mistakes. Is this going to be the turnaround, though? Is this going to be a repeat of last year's CPT? Hmm. Setting itself up. Very difficult to do at this point. Way outside of range. Just a bit outside. You know, I'm even outside of that stamp here. He's like in a range where like he's not gonna get hit by stamp here or the orb as it goes out. Yeah. And yet what he can harass with his own sand blaster and also can walk up very quickly for things like crouching medium kick, crouching strong. Trying to catch a delayed button overhead, to get back up with a recall. It gives Phenom a chance to deliver the pain. Uh, consider it delivered. Into the corner. Weekend has super. Oh, Phenom hunting. He's back, man. He's looking for tip. After the delivery, he's definitely looking for his tip. You were going to go for 10%? No, I need at least 15. That was caught at the end of a backdash right there. Rikuman mm -hmm. was not going to do a V-shift or anything. He, the trigger was his only salvation. He knew that. Right. Phenom knew that. I'm looking at Tangleman point now. Phenom off to a pretty, pretty big change in regards to what happened last CPT. Rikuman's Barnett does have the meter advantage as well, though. So consistently is Phenom at the right spot. He walks backwards a lot of the time. But then, as you need to, to knock your corner, he also walks forward at just the right times a lot of this situation as well. And navigating that little spot is just not at all easy. Oof. But he's doing it. Out of there. He should break, finding success in that. And now it's Rickman's or fly out. A chance to V-skill up. So intense. It's actually super intense. You can no, see the cat and mouse range. range. Yeah, no doubt. Plus. No risks taken. Okay, that again gave the trigger. Here's Rickmon's moving. <gasps> One of the empty jump what? low, but Fina was so ready. Plus frames. Now you gotta hold this. Oh, I was gonna say, if there's negative edge from the side of Rickman's, I think there's a way to get an opening or at least a defensive option. That's gonna be more than enough! Don't drop it! Recommends, yes sir, on the board. Uh-oh. Are we seeing shades of wins. CPT's pass between these two? The first game on the board after a huge detriment. Still at a huge detriment now, I think. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, from match point to the full recovery, or at least another chance at life, this is going to be pretty intense. And it's coming without Phenom like getting got very often. It's not like Phenom all of a sudden played badly. Phenom was still at the right range a lot of the times. He was still ready for a lot of the offensive choices by Rikamans Barnett. He was still ready for a lot of the zoning intentions out of Rikamans Barnett. So it's a very, very hard fought battle for him to make this happen. Not gonna be some easy giveaway. Look at the amount of sandblasters per minute, by the way. It's been pretty critical. You got a meter built up, you got a damage you're getting. Yeah. You, you know it. Ooh, that's not gonna be. Uh oh. 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 The damage in the stun. Bro. Yeah, he knew it. That was the big risk. A throw would have done it. A hit would have done it. Tough position to be in. And again, as Minot, you do not want to spend the V meter if you can help it, especially right there. So Phenom again goes up to tournament point. It was a very Luke round, if you ask me. There was a lot of whiff punishes, a lot of big confirmed. And now it's going to be Luke again, forcing me not into this corner. What does Rickmans have on defense? He's been stellar with defense all across the board since his loser's run, but now it's a different beast. It's a different Phenom. No, sir. I can't get out. That was hella me on the shoulder. Yeah. Oh. oh. Rickmans in big trouble. The activation, the trigger is going to have to be what does it. From the front, that's not where Phenom was looking. From the jump in. You know what's patient? On the reset. Very good defense. After that initial hit, he weathered the storm well. 
Oh. We're getting closer and closer. One confirm from Phenom could pretty much seal the deal. Oh, that could have been it. Oh. He needs more, though. He's not going to kill on this. Yeah, Phenom's out. Rickamon would love to find that super. You know he's looking for it. Phenom knows he's looking for it. So close. Phenom backed off. 38 on the clock. He will hang out. Oh, one more time. Okay, Rickamon finds the hit. Tell me it's enough, David. It's, it's not! It's not enough by pixels! It's not enough! <gasps> and terrifying situation now. <gasps> Great goodness! The man went in for V reversal with Minot, and Phenom was ready for that of all things! He was ready for that. Phenom takes CPT in the Nordic and Baltic region and has qualified for Capcom Cup. I get it. I, I totally understand. Was the idea were... like Sandblaster, in, the, the read, yes. Sandblaster into Thermo Barrett? A thousand percent it was. Would have been yeah. super sick, but you would have wow. Gotten a, you would have gotten a big punish. But that, Phenom was good. I feel like even then, you, o you only needed a single touch on Phenom, right? I think, yeah, yeah, it was close. I think blocking one Thermo, or sorry, gear versus one Thermo Barrett would have been good enough. If I, if I play that back correctly in my head, I, I think you would be able to recover in time to catch the rest of the Thermo Barrett. Yeah, I mean, if, if the read that Rikamon's Barnett had had was correct, yeah. I think even would even without it, like, even like, so you throw out a Sand Blaster and you yeah, can't yeah. the Thermo Barrett, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure, that's a punish, for sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. But I think just Thermo Barrett straight up, like Thermo Barrett, well, you block the first one, you go past it, I think I you're going to recover in time. Right? Okay.